Hey you guys, welcome back. All right, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to the dot grid using Keynote on the iPad. About, I want to say about a year ago, I made a video on how to make a standard grid using Keynote, and I got a lot of comments and a few DMs from people asking how to do a dot grid. Now, I am going to be showing you, like I mentioned, on the iPad, you can do this on the desktop version, and in fact, it's a little easier to do it there. So I figured I would show you iPad version because if you can do it this way, you can do it either way. So let's jump in. All right, so we're just going to go straight into Keynote and your screen will take you right here. You want to hit this plus sign here on the top right corner, choose a theme, and I'm just going to pick the regular basic one and then tap delete to get rid of all of this standard stuff that's on here that we don't need. Okay, so before you start to make your grid, you want to think about how you want your end product to be. Do you want to make a portrait pl uh, orientation planner, a landscape planner, or if you're like me, a square planner? And we're going to do a square planner. So you want to hit these three dots over here. Document setup. Slide size. And then here you would have your different options. I'm going to go ahead and select custom and I want mine to be 1024 by 1024. Now, it has a square size here, but to be honest, I don't know what the dimensions of that one are, and I wanna make sure that this is the same as all of the other planners that I make. So I'm just gonna hit done, and then I'm gonna hit done again here on the top right. So now we have a plain, square, easy, easy. So we wanna to go to our plus, table, and you want to add something that doesn't have a lot of like bold lines and stuff. So I'm just going to use this third one down right here. That's just plain, thin line, easy table. So at this point, you want to line it up so that it's flat with the sides of your, um, of your project. So you can see mine here, if I hold my finger down, it tells me what the dimensions are and it says square 1024. And that's exactly what I want because remember in the previous step, I made my document 1024 by 1024. So right now we have just a plain easy template or table, easy table. But we need to make it so that these cells are a lot smaller and still as square as you can get them. If you're making your document a square shape, making square cells is super easy. If you're making it in a portrait landscape style, you have to adjust your rows and or columns to make it um, to make the individual cells square, but you can kind of eyeball it and get pretty close. So you tap here to add additional, I do that every time, add additional columns. I'm going to go up to 30. And then down here on the bottom is where you're going to add your additional rows. And because again, I'm a square layout, I'm going to have it 30 by 30. And then I know that all of my cells are the same size. So now I'm going to hit this little um, circle on the top left of the table to make sure that I have the entire grid selected. I'm going to go to the brush. I'm going to go to cell border. Make sure you have all of them selected. Border style scroll down no border because I don't want any border because we're not making a grid we're making a dot grid so you can also depending on which template um, for the table you select you want to make sure that your cell fill is at none sometimes it'll fill it with white sometimes it'll fill it with a gray shade you just you want it transparent so just make sure that's set to none right here okay so now I want to set my text, which is here. And you want to make sure that you're picking something that has not um, like stylized. You don't want like swooshy or serifs because we're looking for just a plain period. Now, here's one of the first differences between Keynote on the iPad and Keynote on the desktop. Keynote on the iPad, I use a period to make my dots. Keynote on the desktop, I use the option H, which creates that web symbol of just a plain circle. We're gonna work with what we got here and go with the uh, with a period. So uh, George is a pretty decent font for that. We'll use that one. And then you wanna make sure that your justification, which is these things here, 
You don't want it set to um, left or right justification. You want it centered on the horizontal, horizontal and vertical axis. So the center ones right here are the ones that you want. So then we're gonna go to our first individual cell, just tap on it and then double tap so that you can write and you're gonna type a period. Drop your keyboard down. So now we just have a simple period here. So we're going to touch, copy, drag this line over. Now we have a row of periods. Now we're gonna touch again without deselecting, copy, touch cell, uh, cell row A2, drag this all the way down to the bottom so that all of your cells are highlighted, paste. And now we have a dot grid. Now you would think, woohoo, we're done, we did it. Not so much, not quite. We have a little bit of tweaking left to do. You can see that because we use the period all of our dots are a little lower. They're not centered on our square. So we're just gonna drag them up slightly, just like that. And now we're a lot closer to center than we were before. Also too, if you want to have a faded grid so that you're not competing with a really dark dot grid, you can go into text color here and select like a lighter shade. Obviously, we don't want white shade, but you get what I'm going with. I'm going to use this one here. Typically, I would go with the lighter one, but I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to select that one. And then, so I'm going to export exactly what we have here as a, or as an image by hitting these three dots here. Export images. You don't want to export this as a PDF yet. So then I'm just going to make sure it's high quality JPEG. Slide range all, we only have one, so that's fine. And then I'm just gonna hit export, save image. And now I'm going to add a slide, just a blank one. And then I'm gonna go to this plus sign here, images, photo, and I'm gonna add the grid that we just made. So now we have two pages that look identical, but they're not. Watch what happens when I export this as a PDF. Again, I'm gonna to go to these three dots, export. This time I'm gonna export it as a PDF and then just go. So I can directly open this into GoodNotes, which is what I'm gonna do. Okay. So now we have a two page document. Why did I export that as an image before I made it a PDF? Let me show you why. I've got my little stylus in hand here now. If I go to the first slide, all right, this is the one that we did not export. And I long press, see how it's picking up these dots? It's because it thinks that there's text here. But if we go to our second slide, I can long press all I want to and as far as it's concerned, it's just a flat background. So I see a lot of planners with this problem here where you go to paste something and all of this stuff keeps coming up and you can't really put an image there using the workflow that you would typically do, which is you long press and it says paste. And I just pasted our dots from Keynote, but that's cool. <laughs> But um, yeah, so if you export it as an image first and then pull that image in as a new slide, you'll have a flawless dot grid that'll work on any PDF reading app. If you don't export it as an image first, you're gonna have to deal with this crap. So going back into our Keynote file, we would want to go here, tap, this is our grid, and be mindful, any changes you wanna make you have to make before you export it because you cannot change the image of your dot. You can only change the table, but we're happy with our table. So I'm just gonna cut and then I'm gonna hit plus photo or video grid. So that's how you make a dot grid in Keynote. That's how I make a dot grid in Keynote. There's probably like 700 million other ways to do it, but that's how I get it done. So 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any other video requests, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.